How's everybody doing? This is Anna G and welcome to the alternate beginner guides for the dungeon in EVIL. That's right, I recently picked up this game several weeks ago and having quite a blast with it, but unfortunately I couldn't find any information or specific guide for this game online, so I decided to create one for the purpose of helping the new player as well as myself. And I will be honest, there are so many things that are unclear in this game, specifically on translation, overgame mechanics, status specializations, mercenary, and special triggered items. Well, with that being said, the game is still in early access, so I can totally understand the current state of the game, but you might want to prepare yourselves for some major changes in the future update. Additionally, for those who are still searching for this game on the Google Play Store, I recommend some specific keywords such as Dungeon Evils, and it will pop up on the top of the list. The game title is in Korean, but the game language is in English. Starting into the game, there are a lot of different interfaces from left to right. I'm going to start off with the dribble exclamation mark on the right corners. By clicking on this interface, you will gain access to multiple user interfaces which include connect, dungeons, mission, reward, ranking, and settings. The setting setup is pretty straightforward since this interface allows you to configure your gameplay experience however you want. It can be either improve your gaming experience or make it worse. If you don't have a good phone to play the games or a good PC to run Bluestack, I personally turn off Construct, Bloom, Shadow Effect, and lower down frequency to increase the game performance while keeping the graphic as high as possible. This is optional, but feel free to reconsider some of these options based on the checklist. This is how the game looks like with the fully graphic adjustment settings, and this is how the game looks like with the low settings while turning off several in-game effects. If you already noticed, lowering down the game quality will completely make the game completely blurry, and it is very difficult to even see anything on the screen. Make sure to adjust the camera high as high as possible. This way, the camera will capture more field of visions for the beginner gaming experience. Additionally, the game also supports different languages for those players who doesn't speak English. There are also different tabs on the right as well, which include report burn and improvement tabs, which is basically a feedback ticket system. The community tab will direct you to the official Dungeon and Evil Facebook. Coupon tab, which allows you to redeem free items by entering coupon or codes, and on our tab is pretty straightforward. The most important tab out of all these four is the coupon tab. You actually need to visit their official Facebook site to obtain a specific code for the weeks and redeem it for some really nice items like gems, gold, etc. The ranking system interface is pretty straightforward. This tab shows you who's the best in the game, and you can pretty much go through their items, equipment, connect, skills, and even in depth analysis, skill system, and location as well. I have to be honest, you don't see a lot of games with this kind of system, an in-depth analysis system that allows players to check out a player's specific status, which is really good in my opinion, because they can either copy their builds or follow up their top tier player skills for PvP or PvE, and even the connect setups as well. Another biggest factor of the ranking tabs is the ranking zone. This is very important for your character by the way because you need to go through this zone in order to unlock your character level cap. If you reach your first level 250, you need to go to the first ranking zone, tap on it and click for the Korean letter right next to the cancel. To give you guys an example, right now my character is level 1000 and I already surpassed zone 1. Now if you already noticed, zone 1 doesn't have any Korean letter right next to cancels and I believe that's Korean letter is specifically said OK or selected. Let's go ahead and go to zone 5. This is where I should be. After level 1000 zones, I should be in zone 5 and it require level 1500 and in order to do that, I need to be level 1500 in order to access these zones and fortunately I'm not level 1500 yet. And to give you guys more confirmations, let me click back to the my character levels. And there it is, this is my character level at the moment. Next, we have reward and mission interface. These two are somewhat related because they offer additional items and reward based on the daily and attendance. The mission interface gives you a pretty nice reward if you complete a specific task. The reference book displays the status that you obtain through the blacksmith upgrade, and achievement tab offer you a lot of gym rewards. So take advantage of these as much as possible. Another thing you need to notice is that there are two specific rewardable items at the bottom of the list. One of them is side tries and the warehouse. Sidestrike is a really strong mercenary which you can obtain free by successfully run 2500 expeditions and warehouse is basically like a stash where you can store items but unfortunately you need level 1000 or zone 4 to unlock the warehouse system or basically purchase it from the raid system shop which I will cover that later on. The dungeon interface is one of the most important tabs because it allows you to access conquest dungeon, infinity dungeon, and uh, minnows rooms. The conquest dungeon allows your character to gather material that you can use to upgrade your character, knight, and all specific status. Higher conquest dungeon is much more difficult and offers you a better reward. Now, the infinity dungeon is the best dungeon because it offers the best resources location to find legendary gears, artifacts, gems, materials, and gold. 
I spent more time in infinity dungeons compared to the conquest and middle rooms. This dungeon is pretty straightforward because all you'd have to do is killing monsters to fill up the summon ray bars to summon the boss, eliminate it and advance to the next dungeons or continue to repeat the dungeon until you're satisfied with gears or a farming goal. Keep in mind that there are different types of infinity dungeon every 5 stage, it can be either defend the crystals, survivals or the boss rooms. Right next to the infinity tower is the middle rooms. This is a boss state dungeon and it can only be accessed 3 times a day. There are a lot of monsters in this room and the boss spawn randomly on the map so you probably will be spending more time compared to other dungeons. However, this dungeon plays a very important role in the skill system because the boss has a chance to drop a quantity skill items would automatically upgrade your skill directly. High quality skill offer better bonuses and effect. You can also obtain legendary item quality as well so make sure to check this dungeon out as early as possible every single day. Onto the Knight tab, this is basically a mercenary system. You can obtain the following knights in the game through leveling, achievements, and clean quests for the storyline at level 25. The maximum level for mercenary is 500, but you win if I start mercenary for level 450 and 6 star for level 500. To upgrade the mercenary stars, click on the blue lockers right next to the mercenary and it will automatically pull up the awakening interface. There are 4 different tab for mercenaries such as Grace, Chain in Appearance, EXP, and Kanai Status. Grey tab is really what you want when you're upgrading the mercenary star. Each upgrade will give additional flat bonus status such as attack power, defense, and HP for your mercenary. Chain in Appearance is a little bit different because each upgrade costs almost 3 up to 4 times the amount compared to the upgrade's upgrade cost but it gives a huge percent bonus status to your mercenary. In fact, it also changes the appearance of your mercenary and unlock additional skills. You can also level up your mercenary through EXP tabs by consuming the EXP potions. The Kanai status can be confusing at first because there are so many stats to choose from. Personally, I would recommend reduced damage, attack speed, proficiencies, skill attack power, and property defense for mercenary, given the reason that these status offer a better bonus for mid and late game. Additionally, you can also check your mercenary status by clicking on the scroll left side of the Kanai stars. This is very convenient to check your Kanai overall status and finding the pathway to your location your Kanai status. Next, we have the Characteristics tab. This is where you allocate your mercenary skills point to specific specializations such as attack, Y area, and skills. Keep in mind that each mercenary will have a different type of specialization and you can also reset by clicking it on the fire icons on the top right corners. The reset doesn't cost anything but it does refund 20% of the resources that you use to allocate a skill point for your mercenary. I'm not going to cover the mercenary skill builds in this video since I don't have enough resources available at the moment but I will do it in the near future. Next, we have the spell tabs. Each mercenary starts off with a free ability and players can unlock additional skills by changing the appearance for the mercenary in the awakening interface. So for example, my Celios Archer actually had two ability and Andras only had one. In order to unlock the Abyssal Flare, I'm going to click on the Knights, Awakening Interface, change the appearance and strengthens. Not only this will change the appearance for my mercenary, but also unlock the additional skills. So again, go back to spells. And here it is, I have successfully unlocked the Abyssal Flame. This method also apply for Mercenary 3rd ability as well, so make sure to stock up gems, ether, and golden statue for the future Mercenary upgrade. The building interface is very useful in terms of upgrading your heroes and Mercenary additional status from the Blacksmith NPC, material is interested for upgrading purposes, training and exploring for Mercenary, and increase additional reward. Now for example, if I want to upgrade my speedy to level 7s, I need my heart to be level 7s. Now we're going to click on this one, extension, doesn't work because my heart level is way too low. Now if I want to upgrade this, I need more material which include gifs and ethers. Unfortunately, I don't have neither of those. The next heart is the material synthesis. Now what it is hard to do is actually reduce the materials to synthesis from lower tier to higher tiers. So you need to talk to this NPC from the top left corner, should be right here, and so go talk to him real quick. And what you see here is, if I were to upgrade my heart to level 7, I'll get a different demand instead of 36. So it could be 35, 34, or 33 or lower. Now from there, you can actually upgrade from lower tier materials all the way to the top tiers. Now unfortunately, there's no top tiers or anything above for top tiers, so you don't have to worry about that, all in the middle tiers. Next, we have the training centers. This center affects your mercenary greatly because it increases training efficiency with the experience, reduces training times, activation slot on 2 up to 3 maximums, and trainable level under 250, which means that if you have any mercenaries under level 250, you can train them easily and you can increase them experience and level fast to get to level 200 and more. 
The last building is called Pubs. Now this one heavily focused on the reward for the Knight Expeditions between your mercenaries. Wherever your mercenaries successfully run an expedition, they'll get more goals and more reward. I had to cover every single building first before getting to behavior because that's the most important one. The behavior interface had two different tabs, the expedition and training. In order to unlock the second and third slot training, you need to upgrade your training center to a high levels. And to do that, you'll be able to unlock the two and third slot. Now for example, in order to put them into this slot, you have to click on the mercenary. So I want to get Malpass, Balax, and any goes on one of the slots. So let's go ahead and get Malpass. Second slot. Confirms. This one. Confirms in this one. Confirms. As you notice, the experience that I'm getting is like 12,000, which is not much, but they are not actually doing anything. So it's better to put them into the training center and get some good experience. Now you can also cancel them. The next one is Expeditions. Expeditions is a little bit different. It has multiple difficulty and you get gold and experience for it. Now, since most of my mercenaries are in a training hall, we can cancel one of them. Let's see. Elio should be good. Yes, cancels. Go to Expeditions. Let's see. I want to do 100% Expeditions. Will this work? Okay, this one should actually work. Wait. Execution. 90% work too. So, I'm going to confirm that. I went ahead and click on Eligos and confirms him sending him to one specific area for expeditions. Usually this will take a long time, but with the high level centers, I'll be able to finish it in 22 minutes, which is pretty good by the way. And I'll get 3000 gold and a lot of the experience as well for my mercenary. Now, just in case there are other mercenaries as well, but they are not available at the moment. But you can get side trades from the achievements by doing 2000 fighter expeditions. And then there's another one which you can purchase from the I believe it's the stores. Where is it? This one. There you go. The Aster, you can purchase Asters from the stores. It basically feels like a base to wins kind of thing, but it's not really. This is another way to support the game developer, which is pretty good in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and click on the inventory tab real quick. There's something I need to show you about the legendary equipment. If you notice, some of the my legendary equipment have glowing effect. Now, what it does mean is that some of these equipment have legendary ability. The only way to obtain it is farming a lot of legendary ability, and you need to be at least level 500 and unlock zone 2 in order to access the legendary ability. This also applies for the club and every single equipment. There are other legendary ability as well, such as the rolling for dash, tireless stamina, Unbreakable beliefs and so on. So let's go ahead and go to the setting real quick. Ranking systems. Click on this tab and click on the second tab. The second tab is zone two. You need to unlock zone two to get level 511 and unlock the legendary ability, which include Mr. Potion, Rolling Dash, Blood Stephos, Festivals 1 and 2, Custom Polishings, Mana Focus, Instinct, and Ground Smash, which is pretty good. This also applies for other area as well. Set lists. I believe yes. I believe there's more, but personally, if you're looking for a specific set item on legendary, you need to be level five rank and unlock the zone number three, which is pretty good, by the way. All right, back to the inventory real quick. Now, on the second tab, it actually your character status. It includes the level, combat powers, attack value, defense value. Some of these status does have a cap status. So, for example, the attack speed, the cap status is two hundred percent. That's the maximum you can ever get for your characters. And there should be another one. Where is it? Whoa, does something just pop up? The other one should be the evasion rate. You can have up to 60% evasions. And then the next one should be your movement seek, which is maximum of 200%. It's very difficult to get 200% movement speed. So if you're the type of person who really can run fast around the map, Go ahead and give it a try. All right. On the next tab is actually your status allocation. The only way to get the absolute point is get is leveling up to 250 and above that's the only way now for strength side you can get attack power critical attacks and attack speed for dex you can get movement speed in all defense power provinces for intelligence you can get reduced mana consumption xp restore on kill mana and extra for auto status as well for my character i'm actually using a knight so i'm heavily focused on strength and mentality now there's one problem if you notice that somebody's status has maximum values cap status so meaning that once you get there you won't get any more than that except any status that specifically said there's no limit to this and there's no limit to this i personally go for strength and mentality which is really good for my characters 
Now, the next tab is the Relic tab. This Relic is unlockable by the time you get to level 350 or more, but usually it can take a while, while depending on what kind of Relic you want to use. I personally use Mana Blessings, Prom Hands, Mana on the tip of the night, which is sound pretty weird well in my opinion, but it does increase the mana regenerations and warm up. Warm up is whenever you use a skill, it increases the damage output by 20%. The other one is counter attack, is wherever you get hit, there's a chance of increasing your attack by 20%, which are pretty good in my opinion, but I personally prefer the guaranteed versions, which is really better. As for this last up here, it will unlock by the time you get high level, so look forward to that. Next, we have the Powerless Donkey. Now, the Powerless Donkey is basically like a pet, a permanent pet that pick up your item. I'm not entirely sure what these two buttons do, but, but it never work. basically. Wherever I click on them, it never work. But automatic item acquisition grades can be very difficult to understand, but wherever you just tap on one of these, if you tap on purple, it always pick up purple items. If you tap on blue items, it always pick up blue items. And I personally would use legendary items, which is very easy to acquire from the Infinity Towers. And I'm going ahead to do this one. So it's pretty straightforward. Alright, that's pretty much for the Palace Donkey. Next, we have the Equipment tab. Now, in the Equipment tab, you can pretty much find what kind of equipment that you have been uh, looting from the monster or bosses. Next, we have the Material tab, which is pretty straightforward. And the third one is the loot bot tab. Now, loot bot tab can be very confusing, so you have to be careful on this part. And the only way to obtain some of these loot bots is from monster bosses or perhaps the grocery NPC, which is right here. Oh, what happened to her? In the grocery NPC shop, you can actually find a lot of good stuff. But if you just scroll down, you're able to find the common equipment box or common spell box. Personally, I would not recommend buying this later on in the game. I would buy them in early if you're looking for a specific equipment. The common spell ball can actually get an epic gray items or epic gray skills for your characters, which is pretty good by the way. And then we have the Wiccan Shop, which is pretty straightforward. In the Wiccan Shop, what I do recommend is getting this golden key. These are very useful later on. And Gold is not really matters because by the time you run Infinity Dungeon, you don't have to worry about gold because you get a ton of gold every single hours and they also have spell box and etc etc so a lot of stuff here you can buy here there are also some percentages sell as well so if you might want to consider buying some greater ore perhaps or maybe if there's a sales on glittering spell box or appraisal equipment i would buy them let's go back to the inventory tabs all right so on the full one this is the artifacts tab the artifacts have show you the list of artifacts that you obtain from the infinite dungeons. Now, keep in mind that in order to get high level artifacts, you need to get at least a hundred of them. And it will increase the experience that you obtain. For example, for experience, go attack power, defense power, HP. It can take quite a long time to obtain these. But more importantly, you want to use it for the fifth tab. This is a upgradable artifact. Now, what does that mean? Well, the ancient artifact, it consumes some of these artifacts on the fourth tab and is due to increase some percent status. It gives you a fair chance of getting the drop rate. So for example, I, ha I already have three of this completed. And as you can see here, I get promising for the first ancient relic the second one has tested me in critical hit rate which is pretty good and wherever i kill an enemy my critical will increase by five percent which is even more better and then the third one is mastery and attack suite pretty straightforward for when you're running for infinity dungeons wherever you upgrade one of these you will get additional drop rate for the artifact so which is pretty good now the one thing i do want to mention is that if you want to unlock this one you need to unlock all the three periods so the next one should be the skill damage artifact i hope i have enough three and red kind of let's see if i can unlock one of these i actually want these movement speed artifacts let's go and click confirms it'll fill up 300 perfect so i have this artifact and you notice my drop rate for the artifact increased by 0.5 percent and now it's three percent which is really really good by the way the last tab is pretty straightforward this is costumes you actually need a zone four and a zone three actually zone three or four above in order to craft costumes and this costumes can give you a crazy amount of status which is pretty good by the way i personally recommend the barbarian one because it includes critical rate and critical attack and you can do a lot of damage with this set against ray boss and specifically killing monster in infinite dungeon all right so the last one should be the level 25 portals now this portal is actually moving to the one specific area which is called a cedar hope 
Let me click on that. This portal is only available when you reach level 25 and it'll take you to another cities, which is right here, which is not bad in my opinion and pretty good. This area up here is actually a PvP area, a friendly dual area. So if you want, if you have a friend who is interested in PvP, you might want to come over here and do some little dancing around. <laughs> Now the last one should be over here. There are also other NPC over here as well, but they sell the same thing as the other city, so you don't have to worry about that. But there is one portal in the middles. This portal is actually the quest line of the game. Currently, there are only one chapter one, two, and three. Chapter two does have a specific raid boss. I will cover that in the future, but right now you don't have to worry about that because the raid boss only focus on your mercenary, and your mercenary need to be extremely strong to run raid boss. Also, you can actually teleport back to town. So go ahead and click on this part right here. Oh yeah, back to my territory. Let's go ahead and go back there real quick. Oh, we're back here. Now, there's another thing I do want to mention. It's actually this button right here. This is actually an auto tab. That's right. This game does have auto. So whenever you run infinity dungeons, you can go ahead and just tap on this part and it'll, it'll automatically run the dungeons and kill a monster over and over and over again you can also go to the next stage or repeat so let me go do a pure example for infinity dungeons oh infinity dungeon can only have three mercenaries so keep that in mind perfect we're here so when you enter the infinity dungeons go ahead and click on this part right here and the game will automatically run the infinity dungeon now keep in mind you do have to click this over again in order oh look just my first legendary <laughs> okay you do have to click one of this again in order to get the game repeated over running and running again now this is a pretty straightforward as i sort of mentioned before infinity dungeon is all about clean monster or random map get this uh, summon rate 200 percent summon the boss it kill it and advance the next day or repeat it pretty straightforward well that's pretty much for this video thank you very much for watching i hope you all find this video useful as much as i am this is samji once again and i'll see you all next time later